Many thanks for staying with us on TVC Breakfast. It's 71 days now to the conduct of the 2023 elections and presidential candidates are touring the country, breaking down their plans for the nation. For the candidate of the All Progressives Congress, Bola Tinubu, his People's Democratic Party and Labour Party counterparts that Atiku Abubakar and uh, Peter Obi have unveiled plans they believe will help salvage the country from the economic and security challenges endangering its progress. The candidates disclosed their plans at their campaign rallies in Kaduna, Joss and Lokoja respectively. Bolatinubu promised to tackle insecurity, provide jobs for the youth and boost agriculture for food sufficiency, while Atiku Abubakar promised to return peace to the land as well as revamping the economy and he says he will construct roads. For Peter Obi, he says he will resuscitate the Ajakuta steel, prioritize production over consumption, and increase uh, the country's minimum wage. We have in the studio with us a supporter of the Ashwaju uh, presidential movement, Joey Bokwe. We also have the organizing secretary of Labour Party at the Suruliri local government area, and Seabasi Ekanem. Joining us from our Boja studio is uh, PDP chieftain Shegun Shoumi. Gentlemen, you're all welcome. Mr. Bokwe and Seabasi, thank you for joining us. Mr. Shoumi in Abuja, we appreciate uh, you joining us at this time. So obviously it's a full house and we'll, we'll do our best to manage time. Uh, getting to know the house, how your presidential candidates will uh, help actualize all what you have said you will do if elected. Uh, for you, Ms. Egbukwe, why do you think Ashiwa Jutinubu is the best man to succeed uh, President Buhari? Track records. Background. You know. Anybody that has had the, the privilege to govern Lagos can take Nigeria. Please, volume, please. Sorry, As I sorry, speak to you now, Achwaju has almost 30 years experience to put to the table. And that is that is it. If you if you want to travel abroad now, maybe you are going to UK, when you get to the airport, they ask you about your visa, passports. Yeah, BTA. If you don't have those things, you don't have any business at the airport. Yeah. There's so many things that you need to do that will qualify you to be the president of Nigeria. It's a, it's a serious country, you know, of multi-ethnic groups. Difficult to govern, you know. So if you have passed through Lagos for eight years and then you have been a senator, you have been a leader. You have built bridges across. You can see what we're seeing here. East, west, north, or south. Then that's the way you can dream of coming near the corridor of power in Nigeria. It's not a tip. It's not an all commerce affairs. It is for the serious minded and those who understand the, what is called leadership. So that's why. Look, look at it. Nobody, I don't think there's anybody that is as qualified as him, given the people who has built, including me. I'm from South Southeast. Look at the governors he has built. Federal legislators, you know, I'm talking about senators and House of Rep members. You know, the House of Assembly members here in Lagos, across Nigeria, I right know. So he is, I mean, Nigerians should be begging him to govern Nigeria, to, you know, to do you know, what he has done for years, bringing up leaders, building bridges, building friends across Nigeria. You can see what we are seeing today. It's not a day's job. You can't name what that could not have been. I don't hear what... You don't give what you don't have. So we don't want to experiment because you can, you can give somebody power. And that person can waste eight, four years. If care is not taken, he will, he will mess up eight years. Unlike the World, World Cup that is going on here now. If you, in, in, in Qatar, if you are kicked out, you go the next day. You don't wait. But a bad governor, a bad president will stay for four years. And if care is not taken, he would have muzzled, he would have gotten a lot of muzzle, a lot of money 
wait to go for another four, four years. So you would have lost eight years. That's why we're saying, look, let us, all this noise all over the place, let us concentrate on the man who know, who, who know the road. All right. So that said, um, we cannot con um, connect with uh, Mr. Shegun Shoumi at the moment, uh, you know, to speak. He's joining us from Abuja, but we have, uh, you know, representing the Peter O.B. Uh, campaign group, Dr. Uh, Ekanem. It's good to see you here, you know, wearing your hat as a politician, as against, you know, what many of us know you as, you know, you know the medical doctor. But for the Peter O.B., you know, um, campaign that you represent, why do you think he's the best man for the job? Mr. Ipokwe here uh, for the APC spoke about the records of, um, you know, Ashiwaji Tinobu. For you, uh, what does Peter Obi have going for himself? You know, I feel very, very sad when I see uh, people trying the same thing and expecting different results. It becomes very, very ironical. We have tried APC since 2015. This is 2022. Next year, we'll make it eight years. And I, I, I went through the roads of the streets of Nigeria and asked Nigerians, how has your life been between 2015 and now? And the answer is unanimous. It has gone from bad to worse. APC has tried for eight years. And APC has failed in all its promises to Nigerians. All. Not even one. I have a copy of the manifesto of 2015. Not even one of those promises has been fulfilled. Insecurity has gone from bad to worse. It was first located within the Northeast. Now it is every aspect of Nigeria. Last week I was in Ibadan. I had to fly from Lagos to Ibadan. That is our neighbor because of the insecurity at Ibadan, a Lagos Ibadan Expressway. This did not happen even in 2015. Now, Peter B is a man of impeccable character, and I'm going to just take you through his antecedents. He was a man known for cutting the cost of governance. And we all know, everybody, even my brother here knows that the main problem with the country today is the cost of governance. Two-thirds of what we aim as a country goes into governance. How then can we survive? What happened to capital investment? What happened to infrastructure? When we are servicing our political leaders with two-thirds of the money that we make. In, a, uh, in addition to that, Peter Obi is a man that in 2015, when Nigeria was done with the Millennium Development Goals, which was the unit of measuring development as stipulated by the United Nations, Peter Gregory Obi was the best in Nigeria. Other people that are contesting were governors. One person was a governor. Even Bola Metunubu was a governor. But Peter Obi was the best in Nigeria in terms of Millennium Development Goals. We are talking about a man who lifted an ambassador from number 26 in Waek and Neko to number one. Nigeria right now is having a dilapidated uh, educational system. Medical doctors, pharmacists, professors are leaving the shores of this country because the Nigerian educational system is seen as a house. We need a man who can resuscitate our educational system and take it from the deplorable state it is to the number one, to become part of the League of Nations when it comes to education. In addition to that, what about the rule of law? Peter B was the man who was known to, in fact, Peter B fought for insecurity, that the lines of advance, the popular advance that you know, the criminal, the kidnapper, confessed in his words that he left an Ambra state because of the security infrastructure that was put in place by Peter B, and came to Lagos State and thrived. And in, my senior colleague was kidnapped by Vance. He thrived in Lagos, but could not thrive in Anambra State. What a man Peter B is. Peter B put in place developmental strides that even the people, the elderly people, the young people, the children in Anambra State felt the impact of governance. That unemployment in Anambra State dropped from 51% to 13% under Peter Obi's watch. 
Peter Obi is the man that Nigeria needs. Nigeria does not need a, a, an autocrat. Nigeria needs a savior because Nigeria is currently in precipice. And the only man that can do that job with experience, with credibility, with the right character and the commitment that we can trust is Peter Gregory Obi. All right. We're still uh, battling to uh, connect with Mr. B. Or do Mr. Shegun Shoumi, uh, representing the PDP Presidential Campaign uh, Council. He's joining us from Abuja. Apologies uh, to our viewers but we'll still continue to uh, maintain our conversation here in the studio. Uh, Mr. Iwokwe, so this issue of um, reducing costs of um, governance, uh, the, the Peter OB, um, you know, camp have, have, have said that, they've, they've harped on that. And, you know, for many Nigerians, th there is the belief that we are running an overbloated government, you know, somewhat. How, what do you make of that argument and what is Ashiwaju, uh, you know, a possible Ashiwaju presidency going to do about that? First, let me, I'm going to come back to that. I'm from another state. Peter is my friend. But the presidency of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is not a tea party. You can, you can talk, you can, but that's not what we're talking about. We are talking about background. We are talking about where you are coming from. Today, as I speak to you, Second, the Second Niger Bridge is open. 57 years after it was built in 1965. I won't tell you what we went through. I'm from Lewi, 15 kilometers from Onitsha. It would take me five hours from Lagos to Onitsha to, to, to Asaba. It can take me another six hours or seven hours to get to Newi, a distance of 15 kilometers. It was there since the end of the Civil War, when the Civil War ended in 1970. Today, it is 52 years after. Today, our people are going to use that bridge. I don't know whether it's making any meaning to you. He tried in Anambra State. It's a very small state. Very small state. Kogi State is bigger than Southeast. I can say this is one iconic project. You can't talk about my states. I go to Newi, if not because of the security, I go to Newi four times in a year. Once I have three days, I will just go. But not anymore. Not anymore. Don't use that as a benchmark. These things was coming up gradually until the whole of Southeast got into something else. So, don't tell me about my state. You know, my state, that's too iconic. I could be a one who was able to build a bridge in Oka, like a flyover in Oka, who was able to do an airport, an international airport. I can't see much my friend. But you know, you can you can't rise beyond your capacity. He tried, but it's not enough to make you the president of Nigeria. We're talking about Nigeria. We're not talking about Anambra State, the smallest one of the smallest states in the Southeast. So I don't want to, you know, let's not do is going to petty petty things. This is a serious business. Ruling Nigeria is not, it's not more money. Achiwaju drove to Brinim Bari, a place where no other leader has visited. He drove to that place just to demonstrate leadership and capacity and capability. He took the risk to that place. And then, of course, here. You know, so your background must be known. He can't give, as I've said it, you can't give what you don't have. Ruling Nigeria is a serious business. You won't know until you get there. You have to deal with the diverse ethnic groups. This is all a right. man that abandoned his birthday. We all gathered in, in a co-hotel. Full to capacity. It was his birthday. And the man said, look, something happened in Brinim, Gwari, and some people died. 
we are not going to continue. He, he just left. Everybody left the venue. It shows you something. And look at the movement. It's not, it's not a day's business. Right. Look oh. at the movement everywhere he goes. He's, he's the next president of Nigeria. Let's just take it. All you right. can let me let me educate. I want Mr. to educate Ibuque, my... we Thank you very much for joining us again on TVC Breakfast, and we have been uh, speaking with key representatives of um, you know some political parties, notable political parties uh, at this time. Mr. Joy Bukwe here uh, representing the APC's presidential uh, candidates, Ashiwaju Bolatinobu, uh, Doctor Ekanem here representing the Peter O B Council, and then uh, we have been trying to connect with uh, Mr. Shegushawumi. In Abuja to speak for the Atiku uh, candidacy. All right, so um, Zabasi, a key issue that has been raised about um, the OB candidature, for example, has been yes, he served as, as governor, and um, in interestingly, Mr. Igbokwe hails from the state where uh, Mr. OB governed, and the issue has been he governed for this number of years, but now he wants to run for the office of the president. In the southeast, there are problems, security challenges. In the southwest, too, there are also challenges, and across the country. What do you say or how do you defend his ability to, you know, deal with all this yawning security challenges. And earlier on, you spoke about uh, the Evans example. You raised an example of Evans. Of course, we all know where Evans is right now. He's, you know, serving, you know, you know, death sentence. He's been sentenced to death by two courts here in Lagos. So you, how, how do you argue for the candidature of Mr. Thank Peter Obi? Thank you very much. I, I want to first of all note the fact that my colleague here was not able to talk about cutting cost of governance. No, he will. He will. We still have time. He will. Of course. Because we had to end. We had to take a break that at the, the time. The only person right now that can talk about cutting the cost of governance is a man who demonstrated it. So let's not go any further. No, we will. We will. We'll eventually get there. When it comes, what comes about security, look, Peter Obi is a former governor of Anambra State. Peter Obi is not the president and a commander in chief of the armed forces. So when you, when you are blaming Peter B for insecurity in, uh, in the Southeast, it is a misplacement of priority. There is a commander-in-chief of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari, and he has the veto power to ensure that the lives and properties of all Nigerians are secured. As far as Peter B is concerned, let me tell you something. When Peter B there was the governor of Anambra State, he knows what I'm saying. Peter B addressed insecurity in Anambra State. To the point that even the Inspector General of Police then, Mohammed, said that for five good years under Peter Obi's watch, there was no single arm robbery in Anambra State. None. Not even one was recorded. How does he hope to replicate that across the country? This is how he's going to do it. In Anambra State, Peter Obi had three levels of security. He had at the state level, at the local government level, and at the community level. At the state level, Peter Obi empowered the Nigerian police force and the Nigerian military with vehicles surveillance tools, and funded them and motivated them to go after bandits, to go after arm robbers and rapists and kidnappers. That is why the likes of Evans had to run away. He empowered the Nigerian police force to demolish any building occupied by any of these, uh, you know, you know, uh, any of these, uh, you know, arm robbers. That is what he did. And at the end of the day, not even a single criminal could thrive or survive in Anambra State. At the local government level, he also empowered local vigilantes who reported cases of armed robbery, cases of kidnapping to the police, and these people were dealt with. It was under the watch of Mr. Peter Obi in Anambra State that there was a joint, police, joint task force between the Nigerian army and the police force to ensure that they go after every criminal. It was under Peter Obi's watch that criminals had to disappear from Anambra State. Let me tell you something. Before Peter Obi came in, there was a man called Obianuju. Uh, this man, under this man's watch, Places like Upper Iweka were a no-go area. You can't go in there because if you go in there, every property that you own will be stripped off. But when Peter B came in, under, under less than two years, Peter B was able to flush out those criminals and empower the people of Anambra State by bringing down unemployment from 51% to 13%. Let me tell you something. All the political analysts, economic analysts have said that poverty and crime 
work hand in hand. When you reduce poverty, when you pull people out of poverty, you definitely reduce criminality. And that is the, that is the ethos of Peter B. Peter B intends to use a three-tier level of security in Nigeria, at the federal level, at the state level, and at the local government level. And he wants to work with all the uh, all the infrastructures that are available to ensure that he builds that trust between the people and the security agency. Let me tell you something. The reason why we are having bandits today, the reason why we are having kidnappers today, is not because there are no police force. It's not because there are no uh, uh, soldiers. It is because the people of Nigeria have lost trust in their security system. Peter Obi is that man that will build that trust because he has demonstrated credibility, he has de demonstrated rule of law, and All is right. the man that can fix our security. That's it. All right. All right. We have breaking news at this time. Now we'll interrupt uh, the conversations we're having here uh, in the studio to tell you about the sad one that Nigeria's ambassador to Spain, Demo Seriki, is dead. The Lagos politician was said mm -hmm. to have died in Madrid, Spain. He was aged 63. His death was announced in a notice signed by his children. Today, we'll bring you details in our subsequent bulletins. And we sympathize with the family at this time and pray that uh, Mr. Seriki's uh, soul rests in peace. We'll connect to Abuja at this time now. Mr. Shoumi, can you hear us? I can't hear you, if I could, I will not. Mr. Shoumi, are you there? Sorry, can you use... All right, we'll, we'll, we will try to reconnect again. Mr. Ibokwe, the issue of security features prominently in the manifesto of Ashiwaju Tinubu. And of course, even at his um, Niger State rally, he, he, he spoke about that. Tell us why you think the Tinubu option is the best. So I, I'm just laughing when he was talking. You know Lagos, what it used to be here. This is the economic nerve center of Nigeria. The economy of Lagos is bigger than that of 33 states put together, Nigeria. Entire revenue the same. This is the hub. What did Tutumbu do when he came to Lagos? We got the, we sought the attention of the uh, Inspector General of Police to release the contingent of policemen that will stay permanently in Lagos for, for at least six, seven years. We got them and trained them. All these agencies you see today, uh, RRS, LOMA, you know, LASMA, they were created by him. You cannot be, be looking at Lagos, making comparison with Lagos, like with these small, small states. I'm from an Umbra state. We are very rich, small states, but very rich, richer than the four states, better than all the remaining the four states in the southeast, system. put together. I'm telling you. And the, our major stakeholders, rich men, live in Lagos here. I'm from there. See, don't tell me about it. We are talking about ruling Nigeria. When, you, when people ask you to come, when you're going for a job, when you get there, they will ask you. Tell us your experience, your background. Look at how Lagos is working today. The leaders he has created, no one has deviated from the original master plan. He set up when he became the governor of Lagos State. Forty wise men sat down for months to produce the, the blueprint. We're still using in Lagos today. Nobody has deviated from that master plan. It's not a buy and sell something. Our people in Anambra State are, are no businessmen, major importers. They live here. All of them are now here. If Lagos, this is the only state, actually, just Lagos, we are talking about insecurity, insecurity, he will address it. The security you are talking about is something people have not discovered. Those of them that are kidnapping people, if you give them jobs, they will not do it. They will not give them jobs, pay jobs, give them 300,000 a month, they won't do it. Because if you kidnap somebody on Lagos by the expressway, you know, they need to do this to come out there. 
Police will not stay from here, line up from here to Lagos to begin to man that place. The community will also help. That's what we are talking about. Actually, is talking about community policing. It's talking about changing the face of the police, army, navy, air, air force, DSS. How much are you paying them? Check his manifesto. You want to change the pay packets of security personnel. Take their children away from them. So that if you are coming to work, you will know what you are doing. He did it in Lagos. What he's paying the policemen he took from the federal. Federal police he took from. He took from wanted, wanted the, uh, in the state police. But they said no. He went and took hundreds of them. Trained them here. Placed them on his... You know, these are practical things. Placed them on unimaginable salaries that other states cannot pay. We are forgetting these things. You tell me you want to compare to what I do with small, 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 small boys. That's what we are talking about here. Really, Nigeria is a serious business. All right, let me quickly ask the question. Yes. I asked you earlier the issue of you know, cost of governance, mm. uh, which you know, the, the Peter OB uh, you know, side have, have spoken about. Is that what Nigeria needs at this time, you know, from the outlook of um, Ashiwaji Tinubu's um, manifesto? What, what are we doing about that? He is a chartered accountant and a big counter. He doesn't throw money away. Look at Lagos. He's a man for big projects. Big projects don't cost more money. Do you know how much federal government used to construct Second Niger Bridge that links to Adam Brasley? People are using it as I speak to you. It's open today. How many billions? Why was it not done? An Ambra State had the capacity of building a bridge there. We have the money. That's, what I, that's why I'm talking about iconic projects. They tried. They, you know, reform, rebuild schools and all that. We have money. Our people don't depend on government for survival. But I am telling you that I didn't see one iconic project like Lakey, Lakey Koiling Bridge. Aja flyover in Lagos. Airport flyover. Agege. This is a product of actual political school. You don't, you don't compare somebody who is a graduate of university with a primary school student. It's not possible now. We are talking about practical things. We are talking about a state that has the economy is bigger than that of 30, 30, 30, 30, more than 33 states. Okay. And, 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 and we are talking about an Ambra State. That's not a benchmark at all. all right. There's no comparison. All right, we've been tracking uh, the countdown to the 2023 general election. And of course, presidential campaigns are in top gear. Uh, the APC, the Labour Party, the PDP are among the parties who have been doing their best to woo um, the voters across the country. And we've been speaking with Mr. Joey Bukwe representing the APC and um, Dr. Nsevasi Ekanem representing the Labour Party. Now it's time to hear uh, from Mr. Shegu Shoumi, who is representing uh, the People's Democratic Party, speaking on behalf of its presidential candidate, Atiku Abubakar. Thank you for uh, hanging on. We've been trying to connect with you. And, um, you know, just as, you know, a, a first question, like I asked, you know, the gentleman here, uh, why you think Atiku Abubakar is the man for the job of president of Nigeria? All right. Thank you very much. I've uh, listened in to my friends. Joe, good morning. How are you doing? Good morning, Zegu. Uh, doctor, <laughs> it's nice to see you. Let me just say very, very quickly that uh, when it comes to those who can give a shot at solving the Nigerian problem, you first of all have to root Peter B and Labour Party out of it. The simple reason is that for you to even solve a problem, you need to know the problem. You need to know precisely what you are trying to do. You can't do a flight by night. Uh, with due respect to the aspiration, I respect the energy they have in it, but when it comes to the substance of the matter, they don't really know what they're talking about. You cannot use the little effort of Peter in Anambra to imagine that he's ready for Nigeria. Why? Because Peter is not exactly new. Up until a couple of weeks ago, he was in the PDP. So whatever creativity he had, it's not there. Even in Anambra, when you look at you can't talk about what a governor does and then not look at what happened after he left. Some respect to Bola Tinubu because after he left Lagos, Lagos is still working. 
Peter is like a very tunnel view person who thinks that all of the issues in Nigeria will move on character. And when Peter talks about character, I just ask, what exactly is he talking about? Someone who takes government money and puts it to private business, somebody who doesn't do local government election. It's too complicated. Now, let's go to Joe. My dear brother, the APC is on the ballot with one of our leaders, one of our very bad Ashad Bola Ahmed Tinubu. The only challenge I have with what Bola is trying to do now is that if there was any creative genius in terms of how to run the economy and how to manage security and what have you, for the opt-ins of almost the whole of the eight years, Bola was referred to as the leader of the APC in terms of their national leader. As a title, he liked to be called, and a lot of his followers, including Joe Calden. So whatever creative energy you have, why didn't you pass it to your party? Truth be told, everything has not worked. We are doing really badly. I, even the best of your generals, which is General Mohamed Ubari, has not managed security. I've read through the manifesto of the APC. I haven't heard anything significant in terms of what they want to do. You can put words together. You can make them nice and fancy, but you don't have experience. On the other hand, Atiku Abubakar has been vice president before. And before you say vice president is not president, I need to remind you that he dealt with uh, the Islamic, uh, what's it called now, the Sharia crisis then that was burning up the whole of the country it was taken care of. That government dealt with Zaki Biam and all of the issues that it was taken care of. Therefore, we know that he understands the concept of boots on ground, he understands the concept of commander in chief, and he understands the concept of giving the structure. Now, all of the efforts they say, oh, we have experience in Lagos. Oh, we have had experience in Anambra. One of the reasons why Nigeria is a difficult country to run from the point of view of just being a vice president, a governorship candidate in one state is that the country is too diverse. For you to be able to run Nigeria, you need to have the kind of experiences that someone like Atiku brings to the table. And what are we going to do in terms of security? We have had a longer period looking at it. Remember, we campaigned in 2019, and we are now here again. In 2019, what we said very clearly was that we have diagnosed the problem, and we understand that one of the things that must happen very quickly is restructure the country. Now, it looks like a big word, but it's not. One of what, in terms of security, what does that mean? It means that we have accepted that this country is too big, and it's now ripe for a multimodal security system that can allow states to have their police Local government to have their police all plugged into the national police. In terms of that, what that does for you is that you can begin to nip the challenges at the board. Again, when you talk about giving more money to local government and giving more money to the state and giving more power to the state, what it does is that it gives them the capability to build their own local intelligence and do whatever they need to do and contain crisis in their state before the federal police comes in. As for the federal police, if you read what Atiku has said, Atiku says, we need to gradually increase the number of policing. You need to build it up to about a million. It's ridiculous to say that you are using the numbers we have now when our population is growing something significant. He also said there's time now for us to harmonize all the security agencies within the country with a view to figuring out which of them really is duplicating the responsibility that can be dovetailed or warehoused in an existing one. Now, you also hear that article will tell you, I know, I know some, I know, I know that some people are for it. I have been in charge of the whole of my degree and that environment as a custom officer. I'm trained originally as a police officer at the beginning of my life. I understand command and control. I understand what it means to obey the last order. I understand what it means to give troops instruction and walk through it. I understand what it means to do welfare for officers. I understand what it means to speak to the critical stakeholders in that environment and ensure that we can have a framework that can help them. Remember also, when Atiku Abaka was contesting in one of the previous elections, I think it was 2007, this was how the major issue on the table at that time was the amnesty charge, was the challenge in the Niger Delta. He sat together, put a, a policy document together called the Amnesty Program and the Ministry of Niger Delta. Okay, he didn't win the presidency, but he gave that document to his brother, Yarado of Blessed Memory, and it is implemented. What am I trying to tell you? I'm trying to tell you that. The business of running Nigeria going forward is very serious business. There is nothing we are seeing today that is the real catastrophe. It's just a tip of the iceberg. The APC and Joe's people have made Nigeria monumentally, exceedingly, excruciatingly poor. We have insecurity and lack of unity in the country to the level where you really even can have a great argument on the table that all Nigerians buy into. 
And all of these things require one, somebody who accepts that a restructuring conversation is due, somebody who accepts that we need to figure out how to pull people from the brinks of poverty, somebody who accepts that you have to have a dialogue with all constant parts of the country and run a government of national unity so that all parts of the country can be part of it, somebody who sees a rescue and a unifying agenda as a critical component, somebody right. who accepts that it is time now to deploy technology towards fighting security when you're talking all about right. Mr. Shoumi, we, we have less than 10 minutes now and wow. would also want to have final um, words from the gentleman so in the studio. Mr. Shaomi, let's quickly talk about, um, you know, the economy. Atiku Abubakar says he will revamp the economy. And please, let's be mindful, um, you know, of the time that Mr. Igbokwe and, um, you know, Dr. Um, Ekanem will also be speaking about, you know, the plans of their candidates to, to revamp the economy. But let's start with you. Um, what exactly is Atiku Abubakar going to do? Millions, uh, hundreds of millions are said to be multidimensionally poor. At least 23 mm, million Nigerians are unemployed. How does he hope to go about this daunting task? You will notice that Atiku has been talking about introducing a 10 billion US dollar intervention fund for small and medium scaling uh, businesses and young people, in, in things that young people can do. When you have that type of idea, what it means is that he understands that you need to reflate the economy and put money in people's hands to go and do businesses get to live in a small, small trade. That, in the immediacy, will start to banish hunger. When you understand that somebody who has been a serial entrepreneur in his own right, is a manufacturer, is a farmer, is a, you know, an industrialist, is an educator, all of these are all businesses. It means that he knows what makes a business person accept to do business, and also the challenges that government poses to business people, some of them being multiple taxation, some of them being lack of ease of reg uh, regulation and you know, managing how they get approvals and all that. Any government in Africa now, and let alone in Nigeria, that is not very, very serious and determined around business and creating business and creating opportunity for young people, for women and for children, has no business. It will sit down in the villa and the situation will get worse. But when you have people who have already shown that they took the economy in 1999 from a depressed economy where people could hardly even pay their fees, people could hardly even buy, people could hardly even feed themselves, people could hardly even take their money from the bank. It was policy that drove it. It's policy that gave you a big set of banking system now at Abubakar. It was policy that gave you telecommunication that is the backbone of your new digital economy at Abubakar. It was policy that gave you SUBEM, where you now have an education intervention that allows you to say all states and all citizens of Nigeria are entitled to education for the first six years and three years, I mean nine years. It was Atiku Abaka. It was policy that gave you ESCC, ICPC, and what have you to begin to stem anti-corruption. Atiku Abaka. It was policy that made you have a possibility to advance in Nigeria to compete favorably with those in the world, write letter of credit, and nobody's telling them, get the hell out of here, you don't know what you're doing. All right, Mr. Show me. All right, Mr. Okay. Shomi. Apologies okay. for the interruption. We have less than four minutes now. Let um, Dr. Ekanem here, you know, make his final submissions on this point. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Nigerians. You see, uh, I've listened to uh, Show me, and uh, I'm very perplexed that uh, a man who did not have the final say in fact, in this conversation, the only person I want to speak with is uh, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, presidential candidate of the All Progressive Congress, uh, because he's the only person that had the final say in Lagos. I'm not talking about a, 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 an Olympic man who comes to Nigeria every four years to contest elections. And if he loses, I'm sure that he will lose and he will go back to Dubai. I don't, I'm not talking about that kind of person. He does not know Nigeria one bit. But let's talk about, um, uh, in terms of uh, what uh, Peter Obi brings to the table. Peter Obi brings sanity to governance. Peter Obi brings rule of law to governance. Peter Obi brings economic development. Peter Obi says, let us stop consuming. Let us start producing. In this country, dead or alive, the only governor in this country that bought hundreds of vehicles from Nigerian locally produced vehicles was Peter Obi. He did that in Anambra State. He bought hundreds of vehicles, and that was the, the main thing that skyrocketed Innocent motto to, to the glory it enjoys today. 
Peter be saying, let us unite Nigeria together. Is it the uh, article that said that, uh, the, that Nigeria should not vote for a Southerner? Nigeria should not vote for an Igbo man? Nigeria should not vote for a Yoruba man? Is that the person that unites Nigeria? Uh, but besides, uh, Peter be, um, sorry, uh, Atiko Baka has his party already dissolved, dissolved to. Let him go and resolve with Mike before he can come and tell us that he's a unifier. He's not any unifier at all. But Peter Obi is a man that brings everybody together. Since Peter Obi declared presi for, for presidency, you can see the mammoth crowd from, of Nigerian youth from all over the, the country, from all walks of life, coming together to say, we have seen a new deal. We have seen a new tendency. We have seen a new day. We want a man who is committed to developing Nigeria and ensuring that economic development is uh, you know, it's available for everybody. I'm not talking about somebody that will develop a, a so-called Lagos. And in fact, Lagos has been one of the, in fact, the second worst city to live on Earth. It is not me that said it. It is an international organization that said that Lagos is the second worst city to stay in. Right. But Anambra said, even my brother here can confirm that Anambra State is the best place to stay. He talked about the second Niger Bridge. But he said he hasn't gone in a while. No, 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 he said he hasn't he said, gone. He said he hasn't been able to travel. He talked about the second Niger Bridge. Is it the state government that should... He knows. He knows more than I do. That it is not the duty of the right. state government we'll to, to do that. But Peter Obi represents character. Right. Peter Obi represents competence. Right. Peter Obi represents credibility and the commitment that we need to turn Nigeria around. That's what Peter will be okay. Mr. Igbo, yes, quickly. You quickly, know, this I, issue about a hurdle of revamping the economy. Yes, I'm going to come back. Let me just address um, Shehumi's um, Atiku's matter. Okay. Atiku is not on the ballot. Let me make it clear here. It's not supposed to be on the ballot. Because we had an understanding after the June 12th crisis. The power will begin to rotate between north and south until we, we are matured enough to play better politics. Oh, well, no. yeah, well, well, uh, 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 Buhari has just finished eight years. It is the turn of the south to produce president. So it's not on the ballot. That's number one. Number two is I'm going to read what his principal wrote about him when he was a vice president. Mm. I read. What I did not know, which came out glaringly later, was his parental background, which was somewhat shadowy. His propensity to corruption, his tendency to disloyalty, his inability to say and stick to the truth all the time, a propensity for poor judgment, his belief and reliance on marabouts, his lack of transparency, right. his trust the money to buy his way out of out on all issues and his readiness to sacrifice morality, integrity, propriety, truth, and national interest for right. self and for self and selfish interest. I'll need you to round up, please, in, in the next few seconds. Now, let me, let me tell you about what it takes. I'm going to be now to win election in Nigeria. Let me talk about structures. You need to have some, you need to have somebody in the local government, chairman of local government, Chairman at the world level. Then you now move to states, commissioners, House of Assembly, right. special advisors. Mm. You now move to the federal, senators, House of Rep members, governors. These are the things you need to have. You don't come to right. float. Deep, right. We are talking about All deep right. structure, which we, we, which we are bringing to the table. You have background. Say you just dismiss second night. They are just dismissing second night their bridge. A, a project PDP could not do in 16 years. They were going there to take photographs, but they couldn't finish it. Go there today, our people are smiling. 52 years, you know, trouble, tears, okay. agonies, sorrows. That All problem right, was, Mr. Was solved Ibukwe, we, ha we have to interrupt. I was hoping to get the last 30 seconds from Mr. Shoumi. I'm not sure if I have that time now. I'll all right. Okay, I am, I am being instructed now to, to wrap up at, at this time. Now, Mr. Shoumi, please bear with us that we couldn't, you know, get your final take, however brief, you know, on this issue. But we thank you very much for hanging on despite the odds um, of connectivity. Mr. Joy Gwokwe, a pleasure to have you with us. And Dr. Zabasi Ekanem, thank you very much for speaking with us. Big thanks to you all and big thanks to you all, our viewers, for keeping us company.